Salmonella typhi, the bacterium responsible for causing typhoid fever, was first discovered in 1880 by German physician Carl Joseph Eberth. He observed the bacteria in the spleens and lymph nodes of typhoid fever patients during autopsies. However, it wasn't until 1884 that the organism was conclusively identified and named by pathologist Georg Theodor August Gafke, who was working under the supervision of the renowned microbiologist Robert Koch. Gafke successfully isolated the bacteria from the blood, spleen, and feces of typhoid patients, providing definitive evidence of its association with the disease. Salmonella typhi, the bacterium responsible for typhoid fever, is primarily transmitted through the fecal-oral route. This means that the bacteria are spread when an infected person's feces contaminate food, water, or surfaces, which are then ingested by another individual. The main routes of infection include contaminated food, consuming food that has been prepared or handled by someone carrying the bacteria, particularly if they have not washed their hands properly after using the restroom, can result in infection. Contaminated raw vegetables, fruits, and undercooked shellfish from contaminated water sources are also potential sources of infection. Contaminated water. Drinking water contaminated with feces from infected individuals or using it for washing food or cooking can lead to infection. Typhoid fever is more common in areas with poor sanitation and limited access to clean water. Direct contact. Close contact with an infected person or a carrier of the bacteria who may not show any symptoms, can also result in transmission if proper hygiene practices are not followed. Once ingested, Salmonella typhi bacteria pass through the stomach and invade the cells of the small intestine. From there, they can spread to other organs and tissues, such as the liver, spleen, and bone marrow, causing the symptoms of typhoid fever. Preventive measures, such as proper hand washing, safe food handling practices, and access to clean water, can significantly reduce the risk of infection. Vaccination is also available for individuals traveling to areas where typhoid fever is endemic. Salmonella typhi infection causes typhoid fever, which is characterized by a range of symptoms that typically develop one to three weeks after exposure to the bacteria. The symptoms of typhoid fever can vary in severity and may include high fever, a sustained high fever, often ranging from 103 degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, 39.4 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius, is a common symptom. Headache. People with typhoid fever may experience moderate to severe headaches. Weakness and fatigue. General malaise and weakness are common during the infection. Abdominal pain. Pain or discomfort in the abdominal area can occur. Constipation or diarrhea. Gastrointestinal symptoms can manifest as constipation or diarrhea, which may be severe in some cases. Loss of appetite. A decrease in appetite is common during the infection. Rash. Some individuals may develop a rash, characterized by small, flat, rose-colored spots, called, rose spots, on the chest and abdomen. As the disease progresses, some patients may experience further complications, such as intestinal bleeding, intestinal perforation, or severe infection, sepsis, if the bacteria spread to the bloodstream. These complications can be life-threatening and require immediate medical attention. If you suspect typhoid fever, it is essential to consult a healthcare professional for proper diagnosis and treatment. Early treatment can help reduce the risk of complications and improve the chances of a full recovery. Treatment for Salmonella typhi infection, which causes typhoid fever, typically involves the following approaches. Antibiotics. A healthcare professional will prescribe antibiotics to kill the bacteria and treat the infection. The choice of antibiotic may depend on the local prevalence of antibiotic-resistant strains of Salmonella typhi. It is crucial to complete the prescribed course of antibiotics to ensure the infection is effectively treated and to minimize the risk of developing antibiotic resistance. Hydration. Maintaining proper hydration is essential during treatment, especially if the patient is experiencing diarrhea. Drinking plenty of fluids, such as water, clear broth, or oral rehydration solutions, can help prevent dehydration and replace lost electrolytes. Proper nutrition. Consuming a balanced diet can help support the body's immune system and promote recovery. 
patients may need to start with easily digestible foods and gradually progress to a regular diet as their symptoms improve. Rest. Adequate rest is necessary for recovery, as it allows the body to focus on fighting the infection. In severe cases or when complications arise, hospitalization may be required. This can involve intravenous fluid and electrolyte replacement, administration of antibiotics through an IV, and monitoring and treatment of any complications, such as intestinal bleeding or perforation. Prevention is an essential aspect of managing typhoid fever, particularly in areas where the disease is endemic. Vaccination, proper hand hygiene, safe food handling practices, and access to clean water can significantly reduce the risk of infection.